conditioner at the side of the home. Home from batteries, completely off the roof. G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Off Grid Setups from Maddie at Extreme Auto Caravan Camping. Me and Riley have uh, come a few hours out of Adelaide to do this one for these guys who have been booked in for a long time. So these Off Grid Setups guys, um, if you haven't watched any of the other videos, I encourage you to do so because there are many makes and models of vans with very similar setups with big off grid setups and small off grid setups. So check them out. This one here has the ability to run the microwave, air conditioner, all of your powered devices, including the washing machine, all off grid on the side of the road at any time, all at the touch of a little touch screen. Beautiful and easy to be able to do that with this. So there is seven and a half kilowatt hours. These are the new PowerPool Scout 300s. Really, really stoked with these. So running the same BMS, so it's that continual 250 amp discharge BMS that Paul's uh, used for a long time now. So happy days for those. So there's 600 amp hours there. It's about seven and a half kilowatt hours of energy for this setup. And you can see the solar controllers behind me. We'll get into that in a minute. So we've gone for the Victron Multi 12 3000 120 amp inverter charger running on all of the factory outlets, guys. We've done the Serbo GX with the Touch 50 for full control and monitoring of all of this stuff with temperatures, individual control on each item, battery state of charge, all the alarms, everything you need to see is up on the touchscreen, which we'll get into shortly. We're running all of the uh, MIDI fuses here. This was a full battery relocation. Got the Red Arc BCDC 1250 DC to charger, uh, DC charger there for vehicle charging, and we put a side Anderson plug. Um, so the solar input on this is on a little cheeky side Anderson plug. Should they want to plug in a portable panel to add to the monster amount of solar that's on the roof of this thing? So we've got. A lot of energy here. We've got a lot of potential here to run big devices for a long time, uh, for a long time. So the original setup on this was in the cafe lounge area and it comprised of three very heavy AGM batteries. Now they're 35, I think the centuries, so great battery, but 35 kilos each. So there was like 100 kilos just in this area here. Um, there was a Kotec inverter, a 2000 watt inverter, and it had been pre-wired for the inverter, which we'll get into shortly, and there was a projector mains charger. So the weight in that area was quite quite substantial. So we did some quick calculations, and funny enough, the weight in this area is still 25 kilos better than what he had. It's crazy, isn't it? So now with all of this set up here, if you were to put these on the scales, this weighs 25 kilograms less than what he had in that area. Now we've bought it forward about a meter, okay? So there's that ball weight now is there, so it's probably gonna end up about the same because this cafe lounge area is still in front of the wheels and the batteries will push right against it. So that's probably less than a meter actually, it's probably about 800 mil. That less weight has moved forward, so it's probably gonna be about the same on the ball weight, but he's actually shed some weight here, so very happy to be able to do that. The solar on this, we have managed to squeeze a decent amount, and I'll get into the reasons why we've squeezed what we have on the roof. So when we originally came here, there were three panels in situ on the roof jammed right against the uh, old Ibis 3 air conditioner, like touching it. And as you guys know, with any solar panel, you put any shade on it and the power has diminished by a lot. So there were two 150s and another 150. So there was 450 watts on this and it never did the job. You know. The solar production on this was at its minimal because of that shading issue and it just never worked. And the solar controller was up in the cupboard some say, eight meters probably with cabling before it even hit the batteries. And that's a, a big problem there. It's always best to have your charge controllers, chargers, anything charging your battery really close by. Solar, 
vehicle DC to DC and mains. Um, that way they get an accurate reading of voltage at the battery terminals. There's no voltage drop over the cables. That's why it's better to do that. With the solar on this, as we pulled the panels up and realized our 150s, we swapped them out for 200s. So in the same spot, but moved over slightly, we've got now 600 watts in the same footprint as they had 450. We've also replaced the air conditioning on this. This had the Ibis 3 roof clunker. We've now got the Dometic Harrier Plus, so the inverter style air conditioner that'll ramp up and ramp down and be much more efficient from batteries for these guys to be able to run that for long periods of time when they are off grid. And it is so much quieter. I mean, I've got it running now flat out and you wouldn't even know it's running. It's, they're an amazing. I've personally got the Dometic Harrier Plus. Because we've gone the Plus, they're actually slightly narrower. Um, substantially enough to now increase the gap between the solar panel and the shading issue. So now when the sun is on less of an angle, we're gonna get better charge rates over the day, better yield over the day. Now I've wired up those in accordance to that shade. So there's no compromise when it comes to shade. So if the sun's coming up on the passenger side where the two panels are, they're gonna cop full sun and you're gonna get that sort of, without any compromise, without any shade, into the charge controller and the other array runs separately. So we've added another four 150s. We're able to squeeze four 150s. So that's two more 150s up the front, another 150 at the rear, and then another one kind of dog leg through the, um, through the center here. And we've split them up into a two in series, two in parallel. So two are tied in series away from the shade, another two in series, and then brought down in parallel into the 150. So there's 1200 watts guys, 1200 watts of solar, 600 going into this one, another 600 going into this. All individually controlled. You can see it up on the touch screen, each yield from each array. Um, and yeah, yesterday I think I hit 1100, which was really good. It's super early in the morning. I'm doing this video at like nine, nine o'clock now. So um, I'm out of here in the next hour. So I'm not going to see the big numbers, but hey, it's there. You guys have seen my other videos of what our systems can do. Check them out. So with 1200 watts on this, um, and that air conditioner is running sort of 750 to 850 an hour, that's good yield. Now they are flat mounted, so you're probably never going to see these big numbers for the whole of the day, you know, six, seven hours. You might see it for an hour or two when the sun's directly above, but flat mounted solar, you can't change it. I mean, you're not going to put it on a tilt system, It'd be good if we could, and some people do it, hey. But, um, you know, you... It is what it is, all right? Uh, flat mounted. You're probably going to get maybe a thousand out of it, maybe a thousand and fifty, which is what we saw in this. Anything more than that would be just like I said in the peaks, guys. So don't expect if you guys fit a 1500 watt system on the roof, don't freak out if you don't see that 1500 all the time. But if you saw consistent 1200s, 1220s, in you know, right in the middle of the summer, that's still great. You, like I said, they're flat mounted, guys. The sun's doing this, and you're like this. Now, this is an overlay system. This had an inverter fitted from factory, and they did the old setup, well, I'll show you. So with the old, when they used to fit inverters, they'd fit two breakers up here, and they would fit a little 10 amp. It's hard to see it, because I've you know, redone this area, but just under there, there's still a GPO. You might be able to see it. And that, that little 10 amp plug there runs all of these extra outlets, as you can see. See, there's two here. All right, so this runs through the original input, the 15 amp, uh, which gets distributed from up there. And this ran from the inverter and it had a label on the side of it. Um, but because the inverter has been removed and unplugged, well, instead of him gutting all of this and taking it out, you just plug the little 10 amp plug straight into that GPO down there. And now he's able to run these. There are only, I think there's only a couple of them anyway. He's able to run them from the original system with, without any changing to the wiring. So there's no, no infrastructure change to this at all. It is a complete, seamless, flawless integration into this van. So there we go. Pretty cool setup. I'm really happy with this, um, the way this turned out. It's um, a little bit of a tricky roof because of the way they put the panels originally. But like I said, once we put that... Once we put the Harrier up, that changed everything. It, you know, that gap opened up. I was smiling because we had gaps to allow more sunlight to get on those panels and no shade, so we were able to get good numbers. And uh, it's like 9.30 now. What are we getting, 200 and... Let's have a look here. 200 and 
230 watts, but what array is doing what? And that's the beautiful thing about it. See, when you've got dual solar controllers, two, three, four, whatever, it's all shown up here individually. So if you want to see the yield from each array, you can see it. So this one here, I'm yet to, I'm yet to name them, guys. So <laughs> that's the right-hand side. Now, the sun's coming up over there, and the right-hand side is getting all the all the sun so that's why it's a higher number so 130 watts on that array but if you look at the other one it's only 97. I'll zoom in so it's 97 there yep and then the other one is 130 136 and and rising because you know it's 940 down it's the sun's out today we were running the air conditioner as you can hear and i've got a little uh, what have we got? A little bit of water in here. And it's as instant as that. Look, so that's an air conditioner running flat out. And we'd be pulling 140, 150 amps. Cool. There we go. So in wattage there, if you look at the top right hand corner in the green, you can see the wattage. That's your AC loads. The bottom you're pulling there is what you're pulling out of the battery, 142 amps, and obviously the solar and the and the yellow there. It's so easy to use these things. Like that's the five inch. You got the seven inch variant if you want a massive screen. Um, most of the time the five does the job. You're only really controlling your inverter's AC input on this screen, and obviously the inverter functions are there in the middle there. So if you want to turn the inverter on and off. Uh, if you want to put it on charger only, which is what you would use when you're at a caravan park. And if you're running a generator and you put it to the on position and you can set your AC current limit to suit said generator. So, you know, if we're running a little Honda one, we would drop that all the way down to say, I don't know, three or four amps, except 3.5, pretty good four. There you go, so 4.7. Now that's the reason that did that number is it's based on what's happening at the moment, you see. So it works out the minimum requirement to run said load. A lot of people don't know about that. The reason, you know, you get heaps of um, heaps of emails saying, this AC current limit, Matt, why can't I get it to go lower? Well, unplug your power. Get your loads down and you watch, you can change it. You can chop and change it. But it, if, you, if you've got something running, like I've got the air conditioner running now, it'll only do it based on its loads and that's um that's what it does all the time so if we go to we'll put that back up to 15 there we'll go actually no we're all staying 10 we are running from i've got the cord running out running shed um i know he's got a 15 amp supply but i'm using my little amphibian uh, choke 10 amp the 15 converter so it's got a you know 10 amp circuit breaker on it now because i am running that this this could be a station stay so I will set this for 10. So when I put it, we're not plugged in at the moment, by the way, guys, otherwise you would see the grid in the red there. When I do plug it in, I've now told the system to only pull 10 amps from that, that line. It stops people's breakers going off in their house or their shed or the caravan park or wherever you're at. Basically, you set that number to suit where you plug in. If you plug into a 15 amp supply, Leave it on 15, 16, whatever. You've got that ability to pull that energy in. If you're on a 10 amp supply like I am, you set it for 10. If you're running a little Honda 2, right, it's about 8 amps, you'd set that for 8. Or you can throttle it back. Generators, it's variable because you can you can choose what you want to pull from the generator based on this. If you set that for 15 and plug the Honda 1 in, it will try and pull that 15 odd amps, which is, you know, 3,500 watts. Well, a Honda 1 can't supply that energy. All it can supply is about 850 continuous running. So you would set this for four or four amps or something. So it will only pull that wattage from your generator to stop it from clipping off and you running outside to, you know, reset the thing all the time. Annoying, very annoying. What's even more annoying is setting off old mate's circuit breakers in his house or his shed if you're on a farm stay um, or at a caravan park. You know, the, the pole keeps going out. and. You're always going outside to flick the brake or not, not, not with a Victron. With when you get a system like this, you can set that parameter to suit what you plug into. Bloody cool, love it. Right, we'll get into the business end of stuff. What's happening down here, and I'll give you some close-ups. 
There's the LMI bus fuses now. All right, so everything has a label. There's your DC charger, your solar, solar right hand, solar left hand, fridge, main 12 volt. This has a electric jack on it on the drawbar and obviously the electronic stability control, which we've done as well. There's your solar controls to take care of the 1200 watts there. So 600 watts going into that one and another 600 into that. There's your BCDC 1250D, Red Arc DC charge for vehicle charging. These guys have very thick cable in their vehicle to be able to support the uh, full current demand on this thing. We've also done the wire tie alarm system here, which you can see, I'll try and get that light off it. So there's the wire tie alarm system with GPS tracking for these guys. So this has the intrusion on it. So they can, they go to bed at night, they can arm the alarm quite easily. And if they open up the door, it's gonna go off. It's gonna you know, beep the horn, it's gonna flash the light, it's gonna draw some attention, lock the brakes, pretty cool. Very hard to pinch the, with the wire tie system on there. There's the servo tucked away there, nice and neat. There's the smart shunt down there. Same deal, nice and neat. 95 square cable, this is thick as, thick as you can. It's standard, that's what Victron require. Um, you know, for specifications, two by 50 or single 95 is suffice. And you can see the distance here, guys. It's not a great distance. It's um, really close to it. Everything has a label. It's nice and easy to see. There's the PowerPool Scout 300s. And you look at the footprint, so small. It's, I could fit three of these. There'd be 900 amp hours and we do have enough space if we kind of slush that around. But I think these guys would be fine with um, seven and a half kilowatt hours. There's the Multi 12. 3000 120 amp mains charger inverter there it is it's uh it's a good setup so we had to build a board here of course because this had just the thin you know you can't mount anything to it so nice board there made all done on site ready to go and the relocation was from down here and he had a safe that safe was um under the bed it's now relocated here this is the location he wanted at it's all secured down, ready to go. It's beautiful, very nice setup here. Now they've got all of this as storage. So what they've lost here, right? What they've lost here, they've now gained here because this was full of batteries and wiring to Wazoo. And funny enough, the inverter was mounted on that. And this is thin. You now it's only three mil thick. And that had fallen off the wall. It was just kind of rubbing on the floor. And same with the, one of the batteries, one of the battery boxes had come off and that's the screw from rubbing from under the battery box. So yeah, we've sealed up all the holes under this for these guys to make it a little bit better. It had a remote here for the Kotec converter. We just put a little vent over it to make it look neat, which brings me to the ventilation. Vents, vents down the side, induct air. So we're pulling cold air from the bottom and hot air out through the top. And take note of the orientation of the multi and what we do. The hat's off, okay, the hat's off. A lot of people say, why do you do that? We obviously, if you mounted it upwards and upright, you're not gonna do that. But we do this because it's more airflow. They they run better, more efficiently when they're cooler. Yes, they've got all their thermo um, cutouts if they get too hot and do their thing. But you know, the, the more, the colder the area, the better it is. The cooler the area, the better. Temperature sensor up the top there, so we can monitor the temperature in this area. Uh, we've also done Ruby tags. So one for the fridge, it's nice and cold, we've had the fridge on all night. And one for the freezer. Beautiful. So that's all shown up on the uh, touch screen. So if you want to see that temperature, it's as simple as just hitting that and it, they come up straight away. So we've got minus 26 in that freezer and five in the fridge. That's beautiful deep freezing right there, guys. And that sun's coming up. As you can see, the arrays are starting to get a little bit more sun on them now. So we're at be at 250, 260 watts now, 108 on one and 150 on the other. And you can hear the air conditioner still going. Even at this time of the morning, you see how efficient the air conditioner is when it um, ramps down? So it's only using 470 watts. So it's 950 in the morning and we're only using that from the batteries at the moment. Pretty cool, hey? All off grid guys, all from batteries. 